This graph looks pretty impressive and you might think this is Nvidia or Apple or Tesla, but it is actually the graph of 3.js, which is a JavaScript library that allows, let me actually just show you. Here, for example, is Ikea. They built this. I know it looks like Sims Simulator. It is built using 3.js and you can customize your room, um, rotate stuff around, place them, change the views to be top, left, back. Basically imagine how your room would look like before you make the big purchase of 1000 euros or even more. And all of this was made using 3.js. Also, ah, what? <laughs> also, <laughs> what the fuck was that? Apple has used 3.js in their landing pages for the iPhone 16 Pro. If we keep going down, we can see a phone that is rotating. That is all 3.js and 3D. So IKEA and Apple is using 3.js and also me. <laughs> I am actually in love with 3JS. It is the reason why I actually got my very first money with coding. I was paid $40 and this small project that I did kind of snowballed into me getting a few other projects. So my love for 3JS is pretty deep and long. Let's stop right here and get back to the topic of the video. Why? or how such growth for this 3D browser thingy, aka 3JS. Well, some say it is because we now have stronger devices. We went from flippy phones to actual bendable screen phones. Listen to this. It's actually pretty cool. Now it's a simple matter of supply and demand. We now have more devices that can run 3D stuff, therefore, more 3D stuff in the browser. Yeah. <laughs> and that is kind of one of the reasons why there's such growth. But that is not the main reason. Reason number dos. Browsers are switching from WebGL to Web GPU. If those words sound like some random letters smashed on the keyboard, it is okay, it's confusing. <laughs> WebGL is basically the API that is talking to your GPU to show you 3D stuff in the browser. Basically, API says GPU show this in the browser. And WebGL, the scrawny little weak version is going <laughs> so rude. It's going to be rewritten completely to Web GPU, which is a lot stronger, a lot more powerful and overall buff. <laughs> and what that means is you'll basically be able to play Minecraft in the browser. You'll just be able to go to minecraft.com and the browser will have full access to your GPU and you'll be able to straight up play Call of Duty, Fortnite, League of Legends, <laughs> whatever you want to play, you'll be able to do. And you'll be able to train your own AI model or whatever fully in the browser. And that is pretty cool, but still not the main reason why there's such growth for 3JS. The main reason why is because of this guy. <laughs> If you're not sure who this is, this is a vibe coder. And if you're not sure what a vibe coder is, good for you. Stay, stay that way. But yeah, basically vibe coding was started by this guy, Andre Kapathy. I'm not sure why I said this guy. This is one of the most important people in AI. And the vibe coding trend started with this simple tweet he did where he said, there's a new kind of coding I call vibe coding. Embrace exponentials and forget that the code even exists. Some kind of like the idea of vibe coding, but of course, many in the comments did not. <laughs> This guy right here, Levels.io, took this idea of vibe coding and popularized it. Popularized it. Popularized it. Popularized it. <laughs> he decided to build a flight simulator fully in the browser and to do it, he used 3JS. So this was his first initial idea, looked kind of ugly, but he kept improving it and improving it. But all I could think of that it probably went something like this. Make a flight simulator. What is this? Make a multiplayer f plane in 3D world. Plane in 3D world, obviously flying. No, no. See, this is all just hype. Engineers are not going anywhere. You can't just one shot a flight simulator. It's magic. Engineers are going away soon. 
Now make the planes blue. Ah, no, no. Fucking funny as fuck. If you watch coding videos, you probably already seen this guy. All jokes aside, Levels IO kept improving the game and made a bunch of money doing so. But at the end of the day, he used simple JavaScript aka 3JS to do so. So now we know two of the reasons why 3JS is so popular, but the third one, React 3 Fiber, is also pretty interesting. It was started by Paul Henschel, who looked at React and how simple it was that you can add a button with a simple component. And he was like, I want the same thing, but for 3JS. And so was React 3 Fiber born. A React 3 Fiber basically made 3JS very easy to use. For example, this simple 3D landing page only took a few lines of code to do. So this was around 35 lines of code. To do this with 3JS would have taken like 70 to 100 lines of code and like two to three days. But if we were crazy enough to do it with raw WebGL, it would have taken like 200 plus lines of code and five days or even weeks. And that is kind of the reason why 3JS and React 3 Fiber even exists. WebGL was kind of hard to understand. So 3JS was created to kind of simplify it. And now came React 3 Fiber that even simplified 3JS even more. A good analogy example would be that WebGL is the dictionary. 3JS is the book and React 3 Fiber is the sticky note. What I'm trying to say is that React 3 Fiber is pretty cool. For example, I built this little robot that looks at the mouse and when you look at the emojis, he changes his face. Very cute. And using this same robot, I built a completely free, it's on my GitHub open source, you don't have to give no emails, nothing, tutorial about React 3 Fiber that is beginner friendly for react developers it has 10 milestones and each milestone has like a description and then you go through all of these hints that kind of hint you in the direction and then if you're not able to solve it yourself you can click on the milestone solution and yeah it's a really fun way on how to learn react 3 fiber check it out on my github again completely free i spend a lot of time making this so please if you're interested, check it out. Rabbit Hole Syndrome, he made a comparison video where he compared 3JS and React 3 Fiber. This video is a banger if you're interested in this topic. So I'll also have that link down below. Thank you for watching. Here is a banger video that YouTube recommended. Um, click here and watch it. I think it is uh, pretty cool. Um, YouTube, hopefully you did something good here. Um, yeah.